Tax Objective 6 Problems Problem 1. Which type of figure will tessellate a plane? This problem, as much as any problem I can think of, tests the knowledge of geometry vocabulary. First, this word, tessellate. What does it mean? To tessellate a plane means to cover a plane such that there are no gaps between the shapes. An example of tessellation in everyday life would be the tiling of a floor or another planar surface. Probably the most commonly tessellated shape is a square. We can try out the shapes from the answers one at a time. Here is a regular octagon, an eight-sided figure with all sides of equal length. We can attempt to tessellate this shape by putting several of them together. Do these octagons tessellate? No, they don't. Note the gaps between the shapes. So we cross off answer A. Now we try answer B, the ellipses. And we see that no matter how tightly we pack the ellipses, we still have gaps between the shapes. So that eliminates answer B as well. Next we try the circle. And we still have the gaps between the shapes. So we cross off answer C. Now we try answer D, the parallelogram. And do we see any gaps? No, we don't. So this shape tessellates. So we circle D as our correct answer. Problem 2. Abigail wants to know the width of the Rock River. She knows the distance from the boat dock to where she is standing and the distance from the boat dock to the tree directly across the river from her. Using the diagram above to the nearest foot, how wide is the Rock River? This is a problem of finding the missing side of a right triangle. And while you could make a case for eliminating based on the scale drawing, maybe the shortest distance and perhaps also the longest distance, let's start with the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And for this version, we'll need to remember that since we're missing one of the legs, if you have the a and c and need to get the b, then you take a squared and subtract it from squared c. So in our calculator, that is c squared, or 400 squared, minus a squared, or 395 squared, and that equals 3,975, which is b squared. To get what b is, we take the square root of b by pressing second, then the x squared key on the left side of the keypad, then we can enter uh, 3,975, and close parentheses, press enter. This gives us just over 63 feet, which is very close to answer choice B. So we circle B as our correct answer. Problem three, in the figure below, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is the result of which transformation of triangle ABC? It's a good strategy to try the answers out to see which one matches the transformation of triangle ABC to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Let's look at answer A first. Here is the first step from answer A, triangle ABC reflected across the y-axis. It's in red here to help us see it. And here it is translated five units up. It is in the same location as triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, but is in the wrong orientation. So it's wrong and we cross it off. Next we'll take a look at answer B. Here's triangle ABC rotated 90 degrees about the origin. It's in red. Does it match triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? No, it doesn't, so we cross off B as well. Now we'll look at answer C. Here is triangle ABC reflected first across the x-axis in red. And here's triangle ABC reflected again across the y-axis. Does it match triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? Yes, it does. So we circle answer C. But just to be sure, we try answer D. We translate the triangle up five units. Then we translate it six units to the right, this time in blue to distinguish it. And that's not it, so we cross off D, also further confirming that C is the correct answer. Problem four, if rectangle ABCD is similar to rectangle EFGH, which of the following statements must be true? This problem is all words, but is a geometry problem, meaning that a good way to understand and solve it might be to draw a picture of the problem. Let's look at answer A first. Here we have the scenario suggested by answer A, that is, 
rectangle ABCD is similar to rectangle EFGH, and that in answer A, rectangle ABCD is larger than rectangle EFGH. So they are drawn as such here. The rectangles look similar or the same shape, and rectangle ABCD is larger than rectangle EFGH. However, as a counterexample, we can have rectangle EFGH also be smaller than rectangle ABCD, but be of a different shape, as in this drawing. So this counterexample disqualifies A as a correct answer, so we cross it off. Now we'll take a look at answer B. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of rectangle ABCD is less than the sum of the measures of the interior angles of rectangle EFGH. For this one, we can look at the two rectangles again. Is the sum of the interior angles different between the two rectangles? No, the sum is not different. They're both 360 degrees, as in any quadrilateral. So we cross off answer B. Let's take a look at answer C. The ratios of the corresponding sides are the same. And here are our two rectangles again, rectangle ABCD and rectangle EFGH. And if we look at them carefully, or even if unsure, take the time to measure their dimensions, we see that 12 over 6 is the same as 6 over 3. And that's the very definition of similarity, that the ratios of the dimensions are the same. So we circle C as our correct answer. And as for answer D, that rectangle ABCD is congruent to rectangle EFGH, that means that they have the same size and shape, which can be true, but since it doesn't have to be true, we cross off answer D as well. Problem 5. Line segment PQ and line segment RQ are tangents to circle N as shown in the figure below. What is the value of X? Here you have a situation where the test writer has a complicated way of essentially saying that these two line segments, segment PQ and line segment RQ, are of equal length. And since these line segments are equal in length, we can write an equation where one expression is equal to another expression. So 3x minus 5 equals x plus 9. We can now go to work solving the equation. I like to get my unknowns on the left side and the numbers on the right side. The first thing we'll do is get rid of the x on the right side by subtracting x from both sides of the equation. x minus x cancel on the right side of the equation. We bring down what's left, and that's 2x minus 5 equals 9. Now we get rid of the minus 5 on the left by adding 5 to both sides of the equation. Minus 5 plus 5 cancel on the left side. We bring down what's left, and that's 2x equals 14. Now we divide both sides of the equation by 2. 2 over 2 cancel on the left side. We're left with x equals 7. And this is where we see 7 and we circle our answer B. We can also solve by graphing using the graphing calculator. First we place one of the expressions 3x minus 5 into y1. Next we subtract the other expression. So we place minus and then x plus 9 inside parentheses. Next, we press graph. Inspecting along the x-axis, we can see that the graph intersects the axis at x equals 7, confirming our earlier answer. Problem 6. In a specific pattern of figures, the areas of the first four figures are 4 square inches, 12 square inches, 24 square inches, and, 60 square inches, and 40 square inches, respectively. What would be the area of the seventh figure in this pattern? There are different ways to do this problem, but the way I would always start a problem like this one is to place the numbers into a table so that we can make a pattern analysis of the data. On the left side of the table, we see that the numbers go up one at a time as we go from 1 to 4. But on the right side, we have a different situation. The first difference from 4 to 12 is 8, but the next increase from 12 to 24 is 12, and the last difference on the right from 24 to 40 is 16. We note that these first differences go up by 4 every time. And based on that continued pattern, we would expect the next number on the right to go up 4 more than it did on the last one. And since 16 plus 4 equals 20, we expect it to go up by 20. And that would make the next number on the right, or figure number 5, 40 plus 20, or 60. In the next figure, we would expect 
it to go up by another 4. So that would be 20 plus 4 equals 24. So for figure number 6, we would have 60 plus 24, which is 84. And for the next figure, we would expect another increase of the increase by 4. And 24 plus 4 is 28. And so for our seventh figure, we have 84 plus 28, which equals 112. And where do we find the output value of 112? We find it here in answer B, 112 square inches. So we circle answer B. Another way to do this is to go to our graphing calculator. We press STAT, then ENTER, then ENTER all the input values, the numbers of the figures under the L1 column. Then we enter the output values in the L2 column. Next, we'll go to take a look at the points. Go to the Y equals key in the upper left of the keypad. Go up to plot one and press enter to highlight it. Now we go to zoom, which is the middle key on the top row of function keys. Scroll down to option nine, zoom stat, to zoom in on the points that we entered. Press enter. We take a good look at the points. Do these points look to be a line or maybe a curve? I think they look more like a curve. So now we'll try to find an equation to fit the points by pressing STAT, then arrow once to the right for the CALC submenu, then arrow down to option 5, the quadratic regression. We go here because when we looked at the points, we didn't see the points lined up, and on tax, the next most common relation tested is a quadratic relation. Press ENTER. Press ENTER again. These two numbers, a equals 2 and b equals 2, mean the quadratic function is y equals 2x squared plus 2x. And we can go back to y equals and enter the equation y equals 2x squared plus 2x. Then press graph. We see a perfect fit as the curve goes through all the points nicely. Then to evaluate for the seventh figure, go to the table view by pressing second, then graph. Then scroll down to 7 for the seventh figure. And we see that for figure 7, we have 112 square inches, confirming that B is our correct answer. Problem 7. Line Q is a transversal to the two parallel lines M and N. What is the value of Y in degrees? We need to figure out what Y is, and there are some nuances in this problem that challenges the student who is not careful. We need to first find what this angle is, where 5Y is. Using the geometric principle of corresponding angles, this angle corresponds to this angle up here on line M, just to the left of the 110 degree angle. And since this angle is supplementary to 110 degrees, which means that added to 110, it will equal 180 degrees. It gives us something to work with. So this angle will have to measure 70 degrees. But if we're not careful, we might look at our answer choices and be tempted to answer A. Now we'll set up the equation, 5y equals 70. To solve for y, we divide both sides of the equation by 5. 5 over 5 cancel on the left side. And we're left with y equals 14, since 70 divided by 5 is 14. And we find our answer in D. And we circle our correct answer. One thing we have to be careful about is if we mistakenly divide 110 by 5, we'll get 22 and choose C incorrectly. Problem 8. In the figure below, what value of N will make line segment QR parallel to the line segment ST? This problem is a proportion problem. We need to find the length of this line segment that is in red. If we just look at the line segment and think, we can eliminate some answers right away. The lowest answer is 10, which is just over what the line segment RT is at 9, and since it has to be more than 10, we cross off answer D. And the line segment with the length of N has to be less than half the segment of segment PS, which is 35, which means that it cannot be 20, so we cross off answer A choose between answers B and C, we can set up a proportion. We have N over 35 is equal to 9 over 9 plus 12. To solve for N, we cross multiply the 35, and that gives us 35 times 9 divided by 9 plus 12, and that is 15. And it should not surprise us that it's one of our remaining answers, C. 
So we circle our correct answer, C. This has been Tax Objective 6 Problems. Thanks for viewing.